All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So I think it's finally time to make a video on the legendary Frank Zane. So obviously, Frank Zane is most notably a three-time Mr. Olympia winner. He won the 1977, the 1978, and the 1979 Mr. Olympia competitions. And then in 1980, when Arnold Schwarzenegger made his comeback, uh, he would basically dethrone Frank Zane. And not only would Frank Zane be dethroned, but his placings would drop all the way down to third place. Now, Chris Dickerson placed second at this year's Olympia, and he would later go on to win the Mr. Olympia in 1982. But needless to say, Frank Zane was not happy about the fact that he was coming into this Olympia as a three-time Mr. Olympia. He was the defending champ, and he would drop all the way to third place behind Arnold Schwarzenegger, who had taken a several-year hiatus from the sport, and Chris Dickerson, someone who you know, really came out of nowhere to beat Frank Zane. So Frank Zane was reportedly so upset at the results of the 1980 Mr. Olympia that he threw his trophy against the wall backstage. Now, going into the 1980 Mr. Olympia, Frank Zane did suffer a life-threatening injury, so he was recovering from that, and he was notably a lot smaller, um, and his conditioning was a little bit off compared to past appearances. Um, but overall, the 1980 Olympia was not a happy not a happy time for Frank Zane. Again, he would come back the following year in 1982 and compete against Chris Dickerson, and Chris Dickerson would defeat him yet again. So that marked kind of the slow downfall of Frank Zane in placings. And it's really, you know, the best... You know, the best points of his career were that 77 to 79 era where he was winning the Olympia. So really oddly enough, you could kind of make a comparison between Frank Zane and Big Ramy. Now, Frank Zane was known for his aesthetics and not for his size. And Big Ramy obviously is known for his size, hence the nickname Big Ramy. But the reason I say you can draw a comparison between the two is because Frank Zane came along at the end of the Arnold era. So Arnold Schwarzenegger essentially retired in 1975. Um, and then Franco Colombo would win in 76. But essentially, Arnold Schwarzenegger was just dominating the sport. He was winning every single year, back to back. Um, and Frank Zane was continually placing behind Arnold at these shows. So I think this is very similar to the Big Rami situation. He came along during the era of Phil Heath. And Phil Heath is going to continue to win shows. And I would bet that Big Rami probably is not going to win the Mr. Olympia until Phil Heath's era is over. Um, and until Phil Heath retires and steps away from the stage. Now, the reason I say they're similar is, number one, they both represented a paradigm shift in bodybuilding. So when Frank Zane came along, he was notably smaller than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger was between 230 and 250 pounds on stage. Frank Zane was known to be on the Olympia stage in the 180s, um, sometimes in the 190s, and sometimes he got up to even 200 pounds. Um, but it was noteworthy that he competed in the 180s, which is very, very small. Again, that's almost a 60-pound weight difference compared to where Arnold Schwarzenegger would compete at his biggest. And that's almost what Phil Heath gives up to Big Rami in terms of size. So the paradigm shift with Frank Zane was more of a downsized, very aesthetic physique, and the judges started to look more at lines. And the paradigm shift with Big Rami would be, you know, this bodybuilder that is like 50 pounds bigger than most bodybuilders on stage. And he represents this shift to, okay, this is a new level of mass monster. This is a guy that could be 300 plus pounds conditioned on stage. So this is a paradigm shift to a whole new realm of size and muscular development. Whereas with uh, Frank Zane, it was you know focusing on a smaller realm of size and muscular development and focusing more on lines. So that's the similarity you could draw is that you know Big Rami's kind of waiting on the Phil Heath era to end and Frank Zane was kind of waiting um, for the Arnold Schwarzenegger era to end. And unfortunately for Frank Zane, Arnold would come back and kind of crush his dreams at that 1980 Olympia. I'm sure he wasn't very happy about that. But the difference is, I think one day when Big Rami starts to win the Mr. Olympia, he's going to remain undefeated for a very, very long time. When he finally perfects his conditioning and comes correct, I think he can win the Olympia indefinitely. Um, unlike Frank Zane, who won three Olympias, I think Big Rami could go on to win you know, for 10 years straight once he gets dialed in and once Phil Heath is out of the picture. So let's get back to Frank Zane for a minute. So in addition to being a three-time Mr. Olympia winner, he also won the Mr. America competition in 1968, the Mr. World competition in 1969, and of course the legendary NABBA Mr. Universe competition in 1970 and 1972. Now I've said this many times on my channel that the NABBA Mr. Universe competition in the 60s and 70s was just as big 
if not bigger than the Mr. Olympia competition. So winning the Nava Mr. Universe was a very, very prestigious title. And I think it's important to cover the winners of that show as well as the winners of the Olympia um, because the Nava Mr. Universe title was a huge title, especially in the 60s and 70s when Frank Zane won it in 70 and 72. And also notably in the 1968 IFBB Mr. Universe, he defeated Arnold Schwarzenegger. So that's a different Mr. Universe than the uh, Nava Mr. Universe. So Frank Zane winning um, that 1968 Mr. Universe put him above Arnold Schwarzenegger, making him one of only three bodybuilders to ever defeat Arnold, including Sergio Oliva, obviously Frank Zane, and a guy by the name of Chet Yorton, who I've made a video about as well. So a three-time Mr. Olympia, the man who defeated Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. America, Mr. World, multiple-time Mr. Universe. In addition to all these bodybuilding accolades, um, Frank Zane was actually very impressive off the stage as well. He was a master archer. Um, that's one of the things a lot of people don't know about him is he was very, very talented in the sport of archery. There are many famous photos of Frank Zane and Arnold Schwarzenegger um, shooting some bows together, so that's very cool. I'm very interested in archery as well. I go shooting from time to time, so I thought that was a very cool fact about Frank Zane, um, that he was this master archer. He even taught courses in archery at certain universities for the students there um, in the archery clubs and whatnot. So he's also very, very highly educated. So he has several um, coll collegiate degrees. Um, he has a Bachelor's of Science in Education from Wilkes University, a Bachelor of Arts, in psychology from Cal State. So he has two bachelor's degrees. He has a master's degree of arts and psychology also from Cal State. Um, he has a California lifetime teaching credential. So he is an educator. He's also an Eagle Scout, which I guess is noteworthy um, according to his website with over 50 merit badges, including the Order of the Arrow, which is one of the highest arch or archery honors um, in the Eagle Scouts. So he's been a teacher. He's been an archer. He's mastered the sport of bodybuilding. He was also a songwriter. He's a very well-published author. He has several books out there. He's a member of the IFBB Hall of Fame. He was awarded the Arnold Schwarzenegger Lifetime Achievement Award. And that's one of the places that I see him at all the time. He always has a small booth um, at the Arnold Classic Expo where he sells books, signs autographs, um, and meets fans. So he's still alive today at the age of 75. So in terms of his bodybuilding stats, he was about five foot nine or 1.75 meters tall. Um, his contest weight was anywhere from the 180s to the 190s. And his off season weight was right around 200 pounds or 91 kilograms, maybe a little more or a little, or a little less, give or take, depending on the year. His bodybuilding nickname was The Chemist. And his most famous bodybuilding pose was obviously his notoriously famous vacuum pose. Um, in my opinion, he arguably had the best vacuum pose in all of bodybuilding. It just looked absolutely insane. Um, and that's one of the things that really motivated me was his vacuum pose. Now, some people love his phys physique and some people hate his physique. Um, a lot of people you know, prefer a lot bigger physiques and some people say they didn't like Frank Zane's. In my opinion, in terms of aesthetics and lines, Frank Zane had arguably one of the best Mr. Olympia physiques of all time. Smallest waistline, I think, uh, you know, best V taper, best vacuum pose. He was just excellent at hitting those, you know, classic legendary poses. And again, I'm pretty sure when he won all three of his Mr. Olympias, he weighed under 190 pounds, some even in the low 180s. So that's how powerful his lines and aesthetics were that he didn't need that muscle mass um, like Arnold Schwarzenegger had. Even though Arnold was taller, again, he still weighed 50 to 60 pounds heavier than Frank Zane at some point. So very impressive bodybuilder in Frank Zane, very legendary. Um, his nickname, The Chemist, obviously came from having his Bachelor's of Science degree, and he would go on to earn those other degrees as well. Just to give you an idea of some of his best-selling books, he wrote The Zane Way to a Beautiful Body, Super Bodies in 12 Weeks, Zane Nutrition, Fabulously Fit Forever, which I believe is a very, very well uh, best-selling book. Um, Frank Zane, Mind, Body, and Spirit. I actually have a copy of that. Frank Zane's Training Manual, The High Def Handbook, and The Mind in Bodybuilding. So his final bodybuilding competition would be in 1983, which would be the Mr. Olympia, and he would place fourth there, again, suffering another accident um, where he was uh, very severely injured. It, it required extensive shoulder, shoulder surgery um, after that competition. So that's when he retired in 1983. His placing slipped to, to fourth. Um, so that was the end of his career. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.